From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast present Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. This week's story, The Adventure of the Red Death. Tom Watson, we're off to the docks. Right, you are, Holmes? Not a word to a soul about where we're going. That applies to you also, Mr. Edwards. I shall be absolutely mum, Mr. Holmes. The silence is not so much in your interest as in that of good people of London. Can you conceive of anything more likely to start a horrible panic than the knowledge that tonight a pyromaniac runs amuck in the city's streets? <laughs> You owe it to yourself to look your best, even in the crushing heat of summer. And that's precisely why you should choose a Clippercraft summer suit. When you wear a Clippercraft suit of special, lightweight construction, you keep cool because millions of tiny woven windows afford such perfect ventilation. You look cool, too, because Clippercraft suits are so perfectly tailored, they retain their crispness long after other suits are heat crumpled and saggy. From every angle, a Clippercraft summer suit is a fine investment. For only thirty-three seventy-five to forty-two fifty, your Clippercraft suit will be envied by men who pay much more. Clippercraft is one of the greatest values in America because you benefit from the economies of the unique Clippercraft plan, whereby more than twelve hundred independent merchants from coast to coast pool their tremendous buying power. So look better, feel better, and save money. Look for the Clippercraft label. Dr. Watson, what did you mean when you gave tonight's memoir the title of The Adventure of the Red Death? Well, it was a type of death criminally administered by a certain gentleman in our story, Mr. Harris. The adventure began at a waterfront cafe by the London docks, which extend from the Tower Bridge to beyond North Woolwich. Mile upon mile of quays, warehouses, great basins that are bursting the shipping from the farthest corners of the earth. At the West Indy docks, there was a cafe called the Smiling Duchess. It was frequented by men of all the seven seas. In the back room, the owner, Peter Nichols, sat by a huge oaken table in the flickering candlelight, talking to a very attractive young lady named Vicky, who was employed there as a waitress. Is he here, Vicky? Yes, Peter. Waiting just outside that door. Have much trouble bringing him here? Oh, we acted up now and then. Oh, it's to be expected. He's come from a home for the criminally insane, you know. Bring him in. Come in, Captain West. Uh, I don't remember this place. Was I ever here before? Oh, easy, Captain, easy. Sit down. I don't remember you either. Or this girl. Why was I brought here? The doctors won't ask more questions, will they? No, no, you're out of that place, you see. Now sit down. I'm Peter Nichols. You remember old Peter, the smiling duchess now, don't you? Oh, you eh? certainly remember me, don't you? No man that comes here forgets Vicky. I think, Captain. It was just a few years ago. Every time your ship docked here in London, you'd stop by for a swig of rum. Peter Nichols. Oh, yes. Now I know you. You're out of the insane asylum, Christopher West. Can you understand that? Now, listen to me. You're free. We got you out. Me and Vicky. You did? We needed you. We needed your talent. So Vicky spoke with a guard at the asylum. I gave her money. She used her charms. The guard let you out and turned you over to her. Ah, I see. I I was confused. It, it happened so quickly. I'd fallen asleep in a cell. The guard woke me up. You're going to enjoy yourself now, Christopher West. The way you liked her. We're going to find whatever equipment you need, and you're going to start fires for us. Yes, a fire. They wouldn't let me. Most people won't admit the satisfaction, you know, but I do. Did you ever see how a man's eyes light up when he sees a fire? I want to see things burn. The flames eating away at the guts of the building till it's a black hulk. Where? When do we start the fire? Soon enough. 
Why do you want me to start it? Do you like to see things burn? Do you love the flame that I do? Yes, Captain West. That's why. There's a warehouse nearby on Cuba Street by the Southwest India Dock Pier. I want to see it burn. That's why we took you out of that awful hospital. I am grateful for that. They wouldn't let me start fires. And when I can't, I... There's, there's pressure in me, head. I, I can't stand it. We need you. You can start fires so quickly, so easily, so surely. And no one will know. When? Tonight, Captain West. Tonight! the equipment, Captain West? Yes, Peter. I'm ready. Go on. We'll meet you back at the inn. Good. Good. At the Go inn. on, Captain. Start the fire. That's it. Oh, hide behind these bales, Vicky. I'll watch him. Wait. Shadow's disappearing, see? In the dark there? Now, wait. There, the flames. See them? Yes, they're spreading quickly. <laughs> A marvelous idea of mine, eh, Vicky? West doesn't know what we'll do now while the fire's blazing. If they suspect arson, they'll chase him, not us. We can always deny having anything to do with him if he talks. He's legally insane. Irresponsible. Please, they're furious now. we better leave. We've our part of the job to do now. Come on! Your name is Edwards, sir? George Edwards, Mr. Holmes. I'm the director of the Hampton County Hospital for the Criminally Insane. Are you a physician, sir? Oh, no, Dr. Watson. Mine is a political post, which is why I've come here to Baker Street, Mr. Holmes. Just why have you come here? The patient has escaped. Terribly dangerous man. Captain Christopher West, a pyromaniac. He's been responsible for the destruction of millions of pounds worth of property, the hospitalization of hundreds of fire victims, and the death of a considerable number of others. Yes, I see. Why haven't you adopted the ordinary procedure and alarmed the police? If I were to tell the police, Mr. Holmes, there'd be an investigation. My political opponents would charge me with incompetence and I'd lose my post. You must find this maniac. Will you, Mr. Holmes? Can you describe this Captain West? I brought our file card, his portrait and characteristics. Yes, intriguing. The uh, circumstances of his escape, Mr. Edwards, you've looked into that, I presume? I have, Mr. Holmes. The uh, guard was careless. He left the cell door open. West must have stolen down the hallway and then over the wall. Well, is it a simple matter to climb over your protective wall? Are you gentlemen implying that I've been lax? Well, it's curious, sir, that an escape from a home for the insane, which should be child's play, a glance in the wrong direction by the guard, and the entire city of London's menaced. Curious juxtaposition of facts, Mr. Edwards. Your juxtaposition, Mr. Holmes? Come, Watson, a cab. We're off to the docks. Why the docks, Holmes? Because of this dossier I've read about Captain West. He was a sea captain with a great passenger ship. He was ordered to retire by his firm. He refused. When the firm insisted, he became furious. He desired revenge. He set fire to their ships as they lay in the docks. Yes, but I don't see... He found there was an immense satisfaction in creating fires. He became a pyromaniac. Always in the area of the sea. Always a fire that threatened the harbour and the ships at anchor there. We're off to the docks, Watson, and Mr. Edwards. Not a word to a soul. I should be absolutely mum, Mr. Holmes. The silence is not so much in your interest as in that of the good people of London. Can you conceive of anything more likely to start a panic than the fact that tonight a pyromaniac runs amuck in the city's streets? One of America's proudest traditions is the saga of the staunch clipper ships. These wonderful vessels established honest New England quality everywhere in the world. Today, quality is identified in finer men's suits by the Clippercraft label, symbol of quality and economy, guarantee of finest tailoring and choicest materials. The fine independent local merchant who sells Clippercraft clothes invites you to inspect his great collection of lightweight Clippercraft suits, 
at only $33.75 to $42.50. Compare them with suits costing many dollars more, and you'll agree that never before has there been such value in lightweight summer fabrics, such value in style and workmanship. Undoubtedly, Clipper Craft clothes represent one of America's greatest clothing values. That's why men who know insist on Clipper Craft clothes bearing the Clipper Craft label. So be sure to visit the Clipper Craft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clipper Craft in your suits, sport jackets, and tropicals. In Manhattan, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street, in Brooklyn, Abram and Strauss. In New York, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, New York. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Dr. Watson, Dr. Watson, you and Mr. Holmes were dashing to the docks of London to find Christopher West, the escaped pyromaniac. Yes, so we were, Mr. Harris. That night, our carriage raced across the cobblestones by the edge of the water. As the silhouettes of countless ships passed to our right, London's fabulous docks flew past. The giant granaries, the endless acres of bales and packing boxes, the crates of wool and ivory, the pungent odors of oil and coffee, spices. Well, Holmes. You know as well as I do that London's docks are 45 miles long. How shall we find this Captain West? He's already announced his whereabouts, Watson. He has? Smoke. See it? Curling up toward the sky from that warehouse on Cuba Street. Well, Joe, he's been here and at work, too. Evidently, the fire's been extinguished. We shall steal into this warehouse and see what we may see. Stop here, driver. And step down, Watson. Yes, all right, uh... Keep the change, driver, and wait here. Now, let us hope that this smoldering ruin's been abandoned except for a watchman or two. Then we may examine this warehouse without incompetent meddling from the police. Careful, Watson, it'll be extremely dangerous. Yes, rotting wood, loose beams, <coughs> this blasted smoke. Yes, keep your handkerchief over your mouth. <coughs> we shall proceed very quietly into this wreckage. Slowly, carefully. The maniac may be hiding here. Searched extensively, Holmes. Any clues? I can confirm, Watson, that this fire is of incendiary origin. Most likely, therefore, the work of Christopher West. How can you confirm it? By those dark stains upon the floor. They look like ink. Quite. In carrying his bottle of ink, West spilled a few drops accidentally as he ran. But why ink, Holmes? This ink, Watson, is the type frequently employed for marking purposes at a laundry. Well, I must confess I'm more mystified than ever. Certain laundry inks, Watson, contain a compound that may be made highly explosive so much so that they'll ignite themselves. Of course, assisted by bits of cotton and sawdust or paper, they'll soon create a considerable blaze. This is an empty warehouse. It's most unlikely that laundry ink would be found here unless it were brought in by a saboteur. Look, Holmes, through the window, another fire. Run, Watson, you must reach that fire. Unless we make haste, we shall never find Christopher West. <laughs> Goes the last of the firemen, Holmes. They've managed to extinguish the second blaze. There'll probably be a third shortly. Yes. Watson, doesn't the geography of these two gutted warehouses strike you as fascinating? The geography, Holmes? Yes. Think of their positions. Then of the fact that both were deserted before the blaze began. Where does that lead you, Holmes? Close to the solution, Watson. Then you know where Christopher West can be found? Not just yet. But that may be determined quickly. Yes, but how? By my retiring to the King Neptune, which is a popular tavern nearby, for a glass of beer. What the devil, Holmes? Hundreds of persons may be trapped and burned alive in the next few hours because this pyromaniac is scurrying about, fiendishly starting fires. You're retiring to a tavern for a glass of beer? Oh, I've no use for the stuff, I assure you. It'll offend my taste. My preference for wine and for a certain vintage cannot be satisfied, however, at the King Neptune. Therefore, I must drink beer. Wait by our carriage, Watson. I shall rejoin you shortly with the exact site of Christopher West's next attempt. We're doing
doing well, Captain West. Very well tonight. I'm proud of my work, Peter. Did you see the last warehouse? Like a great candle in the sky. Let him start another far, Peter. Just one more. We need Mark one more. Ah, uh, that's foolish, Vicky. The fires so far will appear to be accidents. At least till we've taken care of our end of this business. We haven't enough, Peter. I want a bit more. A third fire would be too much. You're greedy. You should be content. Greedy, am I? After all these years as a grubby waitress, putting up with anything those drunken sailors did just to sell another glass of beer? Oh, no, Peter. You've a fine idea and we're going to see it through for all it's worth. Greed's been the ruin of more than one, Vicky. When you let him start one more fire. If not for yourself, then for me. Oh, Peter, we can go away together. You, uh, do want to be with me, don't you? Oh, uh, all right. But then we get out. Out of London, out of England. That's it. Do you know where the next fire should be? I do. Come, Captain. There should be more fires, Peter. Many more. No, I'm like an artist who hasn't finished an exquisite painting. Oh, this way. Quietly and hurry. <laughs> That warehouse. I see it. How will you stop this one? Uh, this candle and this bucket of lime. Both will leave no trace. They'll be destroyed. I take the candle so, and with one delicate stroke, the magnificence of a great fire is born. <laughs> the lime is clever of me, eh, Vicky? Kerosene leaves an odor. It'd make them suspicious. <laughs> Not lime, though. Oh, go on, West. We'll see you after. Come on, Vicky. I'm with you, Peter. Now, now I do it again. I'll step into the warehouse. Just lift this window and climb in. And now, Christopher West, that wonderful moment again. That moment before you start the fire. You're alone, free, no one to disturb you. The match. Who's there? <laughs> the watchman. Oh, wait right behind this post. I said who's there. Here I heard you. <laughs> you, 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 you break my neck. Shut up. Good. If you make a sound, I'll break your neck. I, I can snap it like this. <laughs> I'm going to start a fire and you won't stop me. Uh -huh. You won't live to see that they take me back. I won't go no. I won't start the fire the way I planned, though. I have a much better idea. I'll start it with you. Yeah. I can hold you and put the candle to your clothes. There. The clothes are burning, see? Soon the flames will reach deeper. Your face, your eyes, your hair. Burn! 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 Stand away from that person. Ooh. Your coat, Watson. Take it off. Smother those flames. I'll keep an eye on West. Right, Holmes. My coat. I'll pass the flames. Yeah. Uh, 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 God, thank you. Thank you. Don't attempt to run off, Captain West. But uh, I just wanted to... The watchman all right, Watson? Yes, Holmes, yes. Who are you? I am Sherlock Holmes. This is Dr. John Watson. The gentleman before you is Christopher West, an escaped pyromaniac. Glory be. We shall return you to the Hampton Hospital, Captain West. No, I'll never go back. You won't have to go back. Ah. This revolver in my hand, make sure of that. Beat your nickels. Now, don't reach for the revolver in your coat, Dr. Watson. Just stand where you are. You too, Mr. Holmes. You were just in time, Peter. Yes, yeah, so I was, Vicky. Come along, Captain. We'll go. All of us. Holmes, he'll, he'll kill us. Oh, no, Dr. Watson. I'm a mite too wise for that. You see, if I know if they ever catch up with me, I'll serve time. But I won't hang for murder. You'll serve time, Peter Nichols, for robbing the warehouses adjacent to those where you had West start the fires. Perhaps the robberies haven't been discovered yet, eh? The silks, the perfume, the furs you plan to take during this third fire? They'll have to catch me first, Mr. Holmes. Come on, Captain no. Vicky. Let's get out of here fast. <laughs> Run, Vicky! Run! Run behind you! They're not trying to follow us. Let's go after them, Holmes. Don't fight, Watson. He might change his mind and shoot. Just wait. Wait. Now, Watson, your revolver. Take it. If they want to play hide-and-seek in and out of these countless crates and bales along these docks, we'll play their game. Uh, I'm 
exhausted, Holmes. My leg. See any sign of them? I saw a glimpse of Vicky's colored dress, off to the left by the gangways of the wine vaults. Well, let's go in. Very quietly, Watson. They may be concealing themselves behind a stack of wine barrels. I could swear I saw Vicky. Think the three of them are there? Yes. Shall we look? No. They might be waiting for us to do just that. Then they pounce upon us. Now, we'll take a chance. What do you mean, Holmes? Fire in that direction. Yes, right. Well, oh, I'm... It's gushing from the barrels where I shot. But Peter, the captain, the girl, no sign of them. Oh, yes, you got them. How can you be sure? Look there. Spattered on the base of the barrels, Watson. Blood. Before you light your pipe and relax into one of your typical Baker Street reveries, from which I do not dare to disturb you, tell me, how did you know Christopher West would be at the particular warehouse where you found him? Will you recall, Watson, my mentioning the geography of the burnt warehouses? Yes, I do. I observed that although each was empty, each was also directly beside another warehouse which contained priceless merchandise. Go on. It occurred to me that this was a maneuver whereby someone... Peter Nichols, as it developed, had deliberately freed Captain West and set him loose to start fires. Peter, who was an old hand at the wharves, must have known the West case and the merchandise. The fire, you see, distracted the police. And during the excitement, Peter and Vicky would sneak into the adjacent warehouse and help themselves. Ah, uh-huh, I see. But how did you know exactly which warehouse would be next? Well, you recall I left you to visit the King Neptune Tavern. By drinking a beer with the seamen there... It was a simple matter to listen to their eternal gossip and to determine which warehouse had recently received a shipment of highly priced goods. That indicated the spot where West would most probably strike next. Well, there she knows. Why do these things seem so utterly obvious uh, after you've explained them? Because weak minds are like a microscope, magnifying trifling things, but unable to receive the larger ones. However, for your humble servant... Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. Well, Dr. Watson, the Red Death was a gripping adventure. Uh, What became of Edwards, the director of the asylum? Well, he was innocent enough, Mr. Harris. He discharged the guard bribed by Vicky. Peter and Vicky, of course, received long prison sentences. And Christopher West was safely returned to the hospital. Well, Dr. Watson, you know, usually at this time I ask you what you've planned for next week. And we look forward eagerly to another exciting adventure with you and Mr. Holmes. But I'm very sorry to say that we've reached the end of our current series, Doctor. Yes, that's right, Mr. Harris. Someone is with us again. Time for all of us to go scooting off on our vacations. So I regret that we shan't be together for a while. Well, we'll be waiting for you, Dr. Watson. These evenings with you and Holmes have been most enjoyable. Well, thank you, Mr. Harris. And our thanks also to the makers of Clippercraft clothes. May I wish you and yours a pleasant summer holiday? The makers of Clippercraft clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you the last in the current series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective. Sherlock Holmes. Our stories were based upon the character Sherlock Holmes created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes was played by John Stanley and Dr. Watson by George Spellman. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. And this is Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. The most comfortable shoe sole in the world. The Neolite sole. Light? It's light as leather. Smart? It's smart as leather. And wear? It outwears leather two to one. For men, women, children. Get the Neolite sole. Step on it. W-O-R, New York. 710 on your dial.